Hello again. In this video we're going to discuss creating alarms and the basics of the event log. So let's get started. In the interest of time today we will be working with the IR analog and digital application. This is the PID of an application that I modified and converted to ladder logic in the last video. In order to create an alarm, we will be working with the event log. Now the event log can be used for several different things. One of which is alarms, which is what we're going to be working with today. Now your events can be broken up into categories. We've got up to 255 different categories. And the categories are useful when it comes to displaying your alarms or other events. Now, they have generic names to start with, category 0 through 255. Oh, so there was 256 actually there. And we can edit these category names with this tool here. Now I have a uh, Boolean array that is monitoring the AI-104TR temperature module. And here you can see we've got a status word and um, each bit in this word actually represents a different alarm. So I'm going to name our category errors, temp errors click OK. So let's go ahead and add a new event by clicking New. And our category, we're going to use the one we created, Category 0, Temp Errors. And uh, we're going to make these a high priority error. You can set a delay between when the status register meets the required condition and when our event is actually triggered. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at one second. Based on the type of memory you select, whether it's bit or word, you can select the conditions for the trigger. So we're going to select bit and trigger on. And let me find my array here. And uh, we'll select the first bit in that word. So over here on the messaging tag we can define the message that's associated with our event. And our first bit was low voltage. If we had a label library set up, we could select to use the label or string table. Uh, you can select the color of the text for your banners and displays and the background colors. Acknowledge value. This is the value that is written to the designated acknowledge register. Multi watch. This is a pretty neat function here. Uh, I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to set up one multi watch uh, address. And I am going to, just to make it simple, I am going to select the error value. That is the register that those bit, bits are read from. And uh, this little link here shows you how to use the multi-watch function and display the value in your message. So here's the syntax to display as a signed decimal or integer. So I'm actually I'm just going to copy that. Control C. And I'm going to paste it into my message here. 
and where the number sign is I just need to put the number for the multi watch register I want to use so I'm going to put one on the email tab this is to send email messages when an event is triggered or when it recovers so if I, I can select both if I want so the settings for the uh, event trigger you select two and uh, in the other videos I've showed how to set up your contacts and stuff so I'm just going to select group A here we can add our message for our email and go ahead and add our multi watch in there here this function you can actually attach a screenshot of any window in your project if you wanted to your outgoing message uh, I'm just going to leave that off for today's purposes here we have our statistics tab you can define a register to store the number of occurrences you can define a register to display the elapsed amount of time between the event beginning and ending and then there are some other system registers that store general statistical information on your events by category. So I went ahead and made the rest of the alarms. Hardware error, not calibrated, analog conversion error, CJC error, analog hardware error, and then the four input channel errors. The same as these right here. So now that we have all our alarms or our events defined, we need to go ahead and create a way to display our events. So I've got a uh, I already made a page here with navigation keys on it so we've got a few ways to do that we've got an alarm bar it's kind of like a banner that can scroll across the top uh, you can either make it transparent or uh, have a frame and a background color on it uh, you can define which event categories you want to display on it so we did all the alarms for the IR temperature module in category 0 so I'm just going to display category 0 from 0 to 0 you can define the sort method and what you want to display in the banner you can do the uh, date time and the event message here you can rearrange the order that you want it to display in so I kinda like the event message first and then time and then date uh, you can change the time and date formats here so I'm gonna go ahead and click OK I'm just going to put that all the way across the top of my my screen there make the font a little bit bigger there uh, we also have an alarm display Uh, we can enable the acknowledge function and what register we want to write our, our acknowledge to
Here we can set up the display characteristics for our alarm display. Uh, we've got a few different styles here. I'm using crystal. Here's for our caption. Uh, we can set the color so apparently we've got this uh, kind of bluish color here and then we'll have white text and I can put my caption text in here and then uh, this is the color of the text after they are acknowledged and again we can set the categories we want to include in this display and then of course sort is about the same thing so I'm going to go ahead and select all of our categories shape is just a general background shape of your object and we've got all the libraries you can make it look however you want Now the alarm display only shows current events that are that are active currently. Your event display sets up basically the same way except it shows a history of your events. So they'll even display after they're on so there's another color field here for when they return to normal. And uh, everything else is basically the same as the other. So I select all these categories. Running out of room here. Um, and then we've also, uh, we also have a bar chart. So I'm gonna go to another page here that I've got and add one of these in. And uh, we're just going to show our temp category. And uh, this gives you just sort of a, a bar chart uh, over time that uh, displays your events. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat. You can enable the watch line. And uh, so you can touch any part of the chart and it will give you the exact time you know down here on your time scale you can make an estimation but you can pin down the exact uh, time to the second with the watch line and then of course down here you can set the uh, the date and time formats put that there and I actually better put a uh, way home or a way out on this screen. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, download it and trigger some alarms and see how it all works. So now that's all downloaded, here's our application. We're looking at it through CMT Viewer. And uh, we'll go over to our alarms page. And uh, here's our alarm display and our event display. And um, so I've got my thermocouple rigged over here so I can separate it. 
and create an error. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And uh, there's our error. So you can see up here it's uh, current and since I clicked it it just acknowledged it. But you can see up here this is uh, our current alarm that we have now and as I was taking it apart it kind of bumped off here but I can click that now that's acknowledged or that one's actually repaired now this one's acknowledged now watch I'll try to put the thermal couple back together and uh, our alarm went away up here but it retained our history you can see here and they're both green because uh, they went back to normal the second event uh, the first event was probably as I was taking apart it just sort of bumped I could put a little more delay on the uh, on the alarm and probably fix that so let's take a look at our stats and you can see here is our our event right here so I'll go ahead and make another event so you can see that's a part so you can see the temperature is just crazy right there so we'll look at our alarms and of course we've got a current alarm channel one error and here it is active and uh, here's our current event on our stats pretty neat that's pretty much the basics on creating alarms or events in Easy Builder Pro. Now I do want to show you one more method of tracking alarm history uh, through your event log for bit alarms and a neat way of displaying the alarm states. So I want to go ahead and add another page here and I'll call it alarm stats 2 and uh, we'll make a function key here so we can get to it and um, I did some work on this before so let me go ahead and copy some stuff off of this page I made actually I could probably take all of this alright so the way this works we use our data logging And um, if you remember in our project, we had an error value. This is a BCD value here. So um, I am saving this as a as a decimal value, 16-bit unsigned decimal value. I could actually uh, back this up on on in CSV format or whatever I wanted to but all that's in our data logging uh, videos and then here I've got a, a trend display and I've enabled the watch line and I'm writing that to LW0 now what the watch line is uh, anywhere you touch on the trend display here 
it will write the value during that slice of time to the watch line. So then I've created some bit lamps and I'm reading LW zero bit zero. And I've associated each one of these lamps with the corresponding bit from the error word. So let me go ahead and do a little housekeeping real quick here. And we'll go ahead and download our project. I do not want to reset our data sampling, so we have data still there. So let's see what we got. Alarms. Stats. Next. So you can see here's our um, our alarm. It's a value somewhere above 500. I'm guessing it's probably 512, which would be bit 9. Uh, channel 1 error input channel one error. So that's just a real neat way. And then you can store these on, uh, you know, in your, on your media somewhere on the local memory or whatever. And then you can always go back and uh, select other dates to look at a history. And then you've got your timestamp will show there. And, uh, and then so you can go back and the easy way to go back and look at uh, how long the alarms were active. Uh, if, if there were more than one error right now and I was clicked on that, it would show both. So just a, a, a neat way to uh, use your data logging uh, to log bit alarms. That's about it. Thanks for watching and be sure to come back and see more of our videos.